Я передаю слово своей коллеге из Узбекистана, из нашего Ташкентского офиса, Аноре Трюхаджаеву, старшему юристу нашего Ташкентского офиса. Анора, прошу вам передаю слово. Елена, спасибо большое. Спасибо большое всем спикерам. Было очень интересно. Думаю, нашим слушателям тоже. Я начинаю вторую сессию. Uh, dear clients, uh, colleagues, all participants of this conference, uh, thank you very much for joining us and for your time. Uh, my name is Anora Trokhajayeva and I'm a senior associate at uh, Grata International Uzbekistan. And I will be moderating the second session of this conference. And it is a great pleasure uh, for me to declare the second session, which will be held in English, open. Uh, the second session will, uh, be, will consist of two presentations. The first will be uh, delivered by my colleague from Mongolia, Puyan Jargal Pungalak, on abuse of uh, dominant position in Mongolia. And the second one I will deliver by myself on the specifics of uh, application of uh, Uzbek antitrust laws. Uh, should you have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask them uh, in the uh, question and answer column at the bottom of your uh, screens. And after the presentations, so we will have uh, 20 minutes uh, to uh, address them. Uh, now I would like to give the floor to my colleague, uh, Brian Jargal. Hello, everyone. So um, let me introduce myself first. So um, uh, my name is Boyan Jaras. I'm an SSA at Greta International Mongolia. And uh, thank you. Uh, in today's conference, I'm going to talk about abuse of a dominant position in Mongolia. And uh, within this topic, I'm going to give a uh, short insight into uh, competition relation in Mongolia and give definitions of dominant position and dominant activities and what are the types of abuse of dominant position and process of resolving and that the mention what the sense uh, we have presented this uh, so now let me move on to uh, general information on the constitution relation so uh, constitutionally uh, mongolia has market economy which is based on uh, uh, different forms of property uh, combining both world economic development and national specifics and on the other hand the state regulates the economy with a view to ensure the nation's economic security, development of all modes of production, and social development of the population with little interference. <clears throat> so uh, in accordance with this aspect of the constitution, the parliament of Mongolia uh, enacted the competition law of Mongolia in 2010. So the law uh, in connection with this law is also uh, the law is intended to prevent uh, from any market domination and anti-competitive activities. Also, the law prohibits or restricts uh, such illegal activities. And also, the law is a legal basis for uh, competition Competition is related under this competition law within the scope of the constitution, the dominant position. So, under the competition or collectively with others, or related to one third of manufacturers' sales or purchases of particular goods and products in the market, 
such an entity uh, considered as holding dominant position. So um, uh, this uh, Mongolian authority for fair competition and consumer protection is, a, is an authority in charge of uh, supervising the implementation of the competition law and uh, implementing competition policy countrywide and protecting the interests of business entities and consumers. So this authority determines if, a, if an entity holds a dominant position or not, uh, depending on the entity's product range, geographic, uh, market boundary, and market concentration and market strength. So in short, uh, product range is a group of uh, interchangeable goods and the geographic market boundary is an area with economically limited access to other markets. And market concentration represents the proportion of the entity entities, goods and products. And uh, this uh, market strength is the ability of a business entity to influence the market of certain goods and products. So basically, if an entity, uh, uh, if an entity, uh, the market concentration of the entity reaches the, that one third of the market and, and the market strength of that entity influence the uh, has a significant influence on the market and other if and if other uh, criterions are met such an entity is uh, determined as holding a dominant position so um, before moving to the types of abuse of uh, dominant position we need to understand the dominant activities so under the competition law dominant activities are the actual restriction of uh, competition and as well as a uh, constraint on consumer's choice by abusing one's dominant position, uh, limiting the amount, size, and price of certain goods and products. And, and the dominant activities aims at hindering other entities from entering the market or driving them out of the market. So, um, um, these are the uh, dominant activities, such as creating artificial scarcity and creating unreasonable, uh, setting unreasonably high price for goods and products and price discrimination, which is selling similar goods and products at different prices in the market and setting price and allocation of territory of resale of goods and products and etc. And moreover, imposing a condition not to buy goods from its competitors as condition for sale of its own goods and demanding uh, other entities to transfer their financial instruments, related rights and their labor force to itself or uh, demanding in uh, reorganization of its uh, competitors or accompanying goods and products that are not included in the set of goods and products. And all these activities are um, considered as abuse of a dominant position and all are dominant activities. So, um, Um, and basically, uh, a third party or mostly um, consumers or uh, competitors uh, can file a complaint to uh, uh, authority for um, fair competition and consumer protection. And the authority uh, appoints an inspector in order to uh, conduct an inspection to the dominant entity and determine if the entity actually abused its dominant position. So after, after an inspection is conducted, the inspector issues an act, uh, usually demanding an elimination of the violation by the entity or um, imposing um, imposing a fine under relevant laws, but uh, the entity can either accept or object the act. So in the case of objection, uh, there's possibility for the entity to 
uh, go to the first instance court and even appeal to the appellate court and the Supreme Court of Mongolia. So finally, the Supreme Court of Mongolia finally uh, settles this kind of um, disputes. So um, for the sanctions for abuse of a dominant position, the law of Mongolia on infringement uh, regulates, uh, provides for the sanctions for a violation of laws. So uh, if an entity, <clears throat> If an entity abuses its dominant position, uh, and after the pre after the process uh, explained previously in these um, slides, uh, the, the the dominant entity is obliged to um, pay compensation for the damage caused by their uh, illegal activities. And also the entity is imposed a fine at the rate of 4% of annual sales revenue of the relevant goods in the previous year. So um, in this session, I'm going to uh, present a case related to price discrimination. So um, the complainant is a trade center that runs a food market as well as uh, the trade center and food stalls in Ulaanbaatar and the respondent is an inspector of the authority for fair competition and consumer protection. And uh, for the summary of the fact, the trade center uh, changed its price policy and charged different fees for the stalls de depending on location in the food market. For example, charging more, more amount of fees from those stalls located in the midst of crowd. So of course, the tenants uh, filed a claim uh, complaint to the authority for fair competition about sudden rent increase by the uh, trade center. So mm, the, the authority uh, appointed an inspector and conducted an inspection and found that the trade center um, uh, abused its dominant position by selling similar goods and products at different prices, which is price discrimination, one of uh, abuse, one type of abuse of uh, dominant position. So the inspector uh, issued an act demand, demanding an elim elimination of their uh, illegal activities, but the trade center refused to comply with such requirement. Uh, they explained that the tenants uh, didn't agree with the same amount of rental fee. In other words, the tenants wanted the uh, trade center to charge differently because uh, the stalls uh, had, uh, depending on their different uh, location, uh, each tenant had different um, profits. So. Uh, consequently, the inspector imposed a fine uh, because uh, because of non fulfillment of the requirement by the trade center. And finally, the trade center uh, filed a claim to the court objecting the inspector's act. Uh, and, uh, and to note that the participants do not argue over the complainant's dominant position in the market. So the court decides that. Um, dominant activities include activities conducted in order to hinder other entities from entering the market and driving them out of the market. So uh, the price, uh, the change of the price policy isn't intended to hinder other entities from entering the market. So, um, so the change of price policy isn't dominant activity. And also the court uh, regarded that the stalls are not similar products. <clears throat> so, and finally, the court uh, invalidated the Inspectors Act, and all three level uh, level of courts were agreed on this uh, decision. So, but this this decision is uh, special for that. A head of uh, administrative chamber of Mongolia wrote in special opinion on this. Uh, on this case, uh, 
according to the head of the administrative chamber's review, dominant activities do not just intend for hindering or driving up competitors, uh, but also it can intend to constrain consumers. So the consumers or tenants had no choice or had limited choice in those uh, stocks, which is goods um, sold by the uh, trade center. So the trade center's action is action actually constrains consumers. So Um, and also the, uh, the head uh, of the administrative chamber regarded that the stalls are not are similar goods uh, according to the competition theory. So similar goods are interchangeable goods for a common purpose and all the stalls were for the purpose of selling meat products and they also they located in the same row. So uh, it's uh, groundless to see them as a uh, uh, different goods. So uh, personally, I agree with this uh, opinion of the head of administrative chamber. However, uh, this opinion is not binding, but in practice, uh, this is common for lawyers to uh, cite from this kind of opinion. This opinion was uh, wrote uh, on the basis of, uh, the basis of this opinion was very, uh, very good and and became a really good example uh, for the per, uh, per, for future dis, uh, similar disputes. So I presented this case in this conference. So in conclusion, uh, the competition law of Mongolia not only prevents from unfair competition, but also it is aimed at protecting consumers' interests by uh, restriction or prohibition of market domination. So entities in dominant position shouldn't forget about uh, consumers' interests while conducting its business in Mongolia. So uh, this is the end of my presentation and thank you for your attention. And of course, if you have any questions and comments, uh, you can leave them in the question and answer section. And thank you again. Thank you very much. Just a second. And the second uh, presentation will be delivered by me. So and the topic of my presentation is uh, Uzbek antitrust uh, laws, specifics uh, of application. Uh, uh, the merger control, merger and acquisition control uh, regime of Uzbekistan is governed by competition law of Uzbekistan, uh, which applies uh, to both uh, commodities and financial markets. Uh, other legislation includes a uh, resolution of the cabinet of ministers on approval of certain regulations on the provision of services in the field of uh, entry monopoly regulation in commodity and financial markets. Uh, and uh, this regulation, resolution number 338, uh, sets out uh, two regulations. Uh, the first one uh, concerns obtaining preliminary consent for concluding share acquisition agreements in legal entities. And uh, the second one uh, relates to preliminary uh, consent for mergers and consolidations of uh, legal entities. Uh, resolution 338 was adopted last year and simplified uh, the procedure of uh, antitrust uh, clearance. And the purpose of this presentation is to explain the requirements and procedure of obtaining uh, anti-monopoly pre-approval under new regulation. 
So, uh, Uzbek merger and acquisition control uh, provisions are enforced uh, by the Anti-Monopoly Committee and its 14 uh, uh, dip uh, regional departments uh, across the country. Uh, the anti-monopoly body implemented the state policy in the field of uh, competition in the commodity and financial markets. And the state policy aimed at uh, limiting and suppressing uh, anti-competitive actions, unfair competition of uh, economic entities, and uh, preventing uh, illegal actions of state administration bodies uh, and local government bodies and um, uh, provided that the respective thresholds, which will be discussed later, are met, uh, antitrust clearance is required in the following transactions. Uh, the first is a merger and consolidation of uh, legal entities, and uh, the second one is acquisition transactions. Um, both transactions require more or less similar thresholds in terms of the market share. And as the practice suggests, uh, acquisition transactions are happening more often uh, in Uzbekistan. Therefore, the focus of this presentation is uh, on uh, acquisition transactions. And um, moving to the thresholds, uh, in accordance with the new regulation, uh, the threshold for antitrust clearance uh, was slightly revised. Accordingly, the anti-monopoly pre-approval uh, is required in cases where the acquisition of a stake crosses 50%, and previously an acquisition of 35, uh, 50, and 75% in case of joint stock companies, and 50 and 66% in the case of limited liability companies required uh, notification. And uh, uh, another criteria is the uh, aggregate balance sheet value of the assets of both parties to the transaction or the aggregate amount of sale of goods uh, for the last calendar year of both parties to the transaction exceeds uh, 100,000 times the basic calculation value. Currently, the basic calculation value equals to uh, 245,000 Uzbek sums. And, uh, Unlike um, the previous regulations, uh, now the same test for clearance applies to both uh, commodities and the financial markets uh, as opposite to previous regulations where uh, the test and procedures for clearance uh, varied in terms of the amount of the uh, thresholds depending on the members of financial markets. And even if the criteria are met, uh, the filing uh, would not be required for an entity if there is a specific presidential degree or decree of the cabinet of ministers on the merger, uh, acquisition and consolidation of shares of such entity. And for the purposes of determining whether the uh, thresholds uh, apply, the purchaser and the target are taken into account. So the seller uh, is not taken into account. Uh, notification and prior approval is also required if uh, one of the parties to the transaction uh, holds a dominant position uh, in the market. So, uh, and um, uh, moving to dominance, um, it is defined in the competition law of Uzbekistan as the position of one or several companies or groups in the market for a specific uh, product or service that allows it or them to carry out their business activities independently from their competitors and seriously influence the terms of trade of such product or service or to impede other companies' access to this market sector. Or a company or group uh, is viewed as dominant if its market share is 50% uh, or more or uh, between 35% uh, and 50%, uh, provided uh, this company or group had a stable market share for at least one year. There are no other companies or group with a market share of more than 20%. And uh, there are limitations uh, to enter the market uh, for new entrants and competitors. And when we talk about foreign to foreign transactions, uh, based on the provisions of the competition law, uh, which said that the law applies to transactions carried out, out 
uh, outside Uzbekistan. Uh, if the transaction may have an adverse impact on competition in Uzbekistan. And uh, from current practices, uh, we can summarize that a foreign to foreign transactions uh, falls, fall within uh, the Uzbekistan merger and acquisition control regime, uh, where the target entity, uh, I mean foreign tar target entity, uh, directly or indirectly controls any Uzbek entities or own assets located in Uzbekistan. And usually, uh, foreign to foreign mergers are not subject to merger clearance or notification if uh, the foreign target uh, does not have any local presence in Uzbekistan, be it in the form of a subsidiary or branch or shareholding in any of the existing corporate forms, uh, limited liability company, joint stock company, etc. And in addition, Uzbek merger control uh, only applies to transactions. Uh, outside the territory of Uzbekistan, if such transaction uh, may have an impact on the relevant market of Uzbekistan. However, in practice, uh, applicability of filing is reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis and decided at the discretion of the Anti-Monopoly Committee. Uh, now we come to the filing, the peculiarities of the uh, filing. And um, generally, uh, it is the purchaser of the shares or assets who is responsible for filing uh, with the anti-monopoly committee. And a filing fee is set in the amount of 10 times the basic calculation value. Uh, after submission of all necessary information documents, the uh, anti-monopoly committee may decide within 10 calendar days uh, of the filing date whether to approve the transaction or return it as uh, incomplete. And in this case, uh, the review period will start anew as soon as uh, the full set of documents is submitted. And if the transaction uh, raises uh, competition concerns, uh, the Anti-Monopoly Committee is entitled to extend the review for up to one month. Uh, in practice, the Anti-Monopoly Committee usually issues its decisions within 10 calendar days. And uh, it is important to note that in 2020, a new online process for the submission uh, for filing uh, was introduced. And the procedure for filing applications in paper form was completely abolished. Uh, individuals and legal entities uh, may now file applications via public service centers or via online platform, which is the single portal for interactive public services. Um, regarding the documentation, um, the competition law lists uh, the documents uh, and information that must be collected for the filing. And uh, it is pretty much straightforward. It is a standard form, uh, a standard application form, uh, which must include the full name of the business entity, information about the transaction, purpose of the agreement to be concluded, and information on shareholdings in other business entities located in Uzbekistan. Uh, if it is individual, if the purchaser is individu individual, uh, a copy of his passport uh, and uh, his details of his passport information on types of activities rendered, claims of goods, the volume of goods manufactured and sold by an applicant uh, for the last two years prior to the application or from the date of company separation, if uh, less than two years. Uh, any of financial and statistical reports for the past two calendar years, and if the company, uh, be it the target company or the purchaser, uh, if uh, this company is incorporated uh, less than two years ago, then um, there must be an official uh, letter uh, explaining uh, the reasons uh, why it is impossible to submit uh, those financial and statistical documents for two years. And information on the group of persons indicating certain grounds for forming the group, including other additional information as may be requested by the Anti-Monopoly Committee. Uh, power of attorney if uh, an applicant or purchaser uh, does not apply uh, by himself and other uh, documents. Uh, 
so uh, antitrust clearance must be obtained before completion and the filing uh, must be made well in advance uh, of the envisaged completion date of the transaction and um, if a transaction that leads or may lead to a limitation of competition uh, in the Uzbekistan market is closed without the uh, anti-monopoly committee's uh, approval, then the anti-monopoly committee is uh, authorized to challenge that transaction in the court. And it is the purchaser who is liable for a penalty. Uh, so, uh, in case of a breach of the competition law in mergers, consolidations and acquisitions, the following fines and penalties can be imposed. Uh, this may be administrative sanctions in the form of a fine, uh, then um, criminal uh, sanctions applicable after imposition of administrative fine, uh, criminal sanctions may be in the form of uh, a fine, uh, deprivation of a right to hold certain position, uh, mandatory public works, uh, corrective labor. Uh, criminal liability is imposed on the official or any other authorized person from the uh, company uh, of the applicant, that is the purchaser. Uh, in addition, um, the anti-monopoly committee uh, may apply uh, to a court to invalidate in full or in part uh, the agreements and other transactions uh, for which its uh, prior approval uh, has not been uh, obtained, or to liquidate a company if it was incorporated without its prior approval, uh, provided that this transaction or incorporation results in limitation of competition. Uh, uh, thus, uh, the anti-monopoly committee is authorized to either prohibit a transaction that has or may have an adverse effect on competition or to require the parties to fulfill certain conditions before a clearance is issued. Uh, the anti-monopoly committee's role is to find a compromise between protection of competition and economic development uh, of Uzbekistan. So as it can be seen, uh, there is a direction towards uh, simplifying the procedure for obtaining a uh, antitrust clearance for uh, acquisition purposes and uh, from the as, pr as practice suggests uh, indeed uh, the procedure now is more or less uh, straightforward and uh, which means that uh, Uzbekistan is uh, uh, now even more open for uh, investments. So thank you very much. I see that we do not have any questions. Uh, maybe we'll wait for some time. So, uh, if we do not have any questions, uh, thank you all. Thank you to all participants, to uh, all of our colleagues, to uh, listeners, uh, to our clients. Thank you for your time. Thank you for dedicating your time to our conference. Uh, thank you very much to all speakers. Uh, we hope that it's, this conference was uh, helpful and uh, see you next time during another conference. Bye-bye.